Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and as you saw a moment ago, we have a problem. We have two white knights and one black knight. We are missing a game piece. And how many times has this happened to you throughout your life where you end up missing a game piece and you wish there was a way to just create a physical 3D copy of that game piece? Well, I have good news for you. We can do it. We have the technology now. Thanks to our friends over at RevoPoint who sent me over this brand new Mini 2 RevoPoint 3D scanner. This thing is awesome. It has all kinds of cool capabilities. You can hook it into a phone. You have a phone mounted on the back so you can achieve true mobile scanning without even needing to be near a computer. It does dark parts. It does light parts. It does full color scans. It can work in handheld mode or it can work in turntable mode. And turntable mode is what we're going to use for today's application. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to challenge myself. You know, I didn't want to have to create the scan and then bring the scan into 3D CAD. I wanted to just create the scan, send it over to my 3D printer, and then create a copy of this Black Knight. And guess what? We were able to do it. And I think it's a huge testament to how easy it is to use the Revo Point 3D Scan software because I've never even owned a 3D scanner before, but with this device, I was able to get it unpacked. I was able to get up and running and make my first scan in less than 20 minutes. So let's get into that software and see how this is done. Okay, so here we are in the RevoScan software, and you can see that right away we're getting some really good feedback. It says that we are disconnected, no 3D scanner was found. This is all kind of thematic throughout the RevoScan software. They really have a nice, easy to use, intuitive piece of software. Very easy to get in there and kind of figure it out yourself, but they also offer a lot of good tutorials if you're a first timer, like I was. So it's clearly disconnected because the scanner is back here. Let's plug this into this USB-C connector. And there we go. We see that it says that it's connected. It's connected to the Mini 2. You have a nice RGB camera here so you can really see clearly what you're doing and if you're aiming at the correct target. And so I think what I'm going to do here is move the turntable right into place, right where we need it. Make sure that that camera giving us the preview lets us know that we're in just the right spot. And then what we could do is we could drop this black knight on here, this missing part that we wish to scan. Now over here on the right, you can see that there's some different modes that we can scan in. One of those modes is object type, general object, dark object. So let's use that option there for dark object. And here we can see that when we are trying to scan that dark object, we may need to adjust the exposure in order to get that dark object to scan a little bit better. But sometimes it's just too dark. Sometimes you have to brighten up the lights in your room or use an additional light. Or sometimes you could even coat these darker objects. Fortunately, we have both a light and a dark version of this night. So although we could certainly scan using dark object mode and maybe adjust some of the settings, I think we're going to get better results if we just use the lighter version. It's going to give the 3D scanner a much better base to bounce those lights off of. So let's increase the exposure here. You can see in the exposure camera that if it's blue, that means it's underexposed. That's a region of the model that's underexposed. So let's make that a little bit lighter there so we get rid of that blue. You'll also see that over here on the right, it gives you a guide as to how close the object should be to the scanner. So as you get closer, you get into this kind of green zone where it says excellent. The model is in an excellent position. It is ready to be scanned. And so at this point, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn on the turntable. And I'm gonna let this thing rip and once again just as far as ease of use goes software is super easy to use super intuitive to kind of click through yourself you see here it says click start to scan so that is what i'm going to do okay and so with that one full rotation i'm going to click complete here and one of the more impressive things about RevoPoint is the ability to utilize what's called feature tracking. And basically what this means is that we don't have to put stickers on the model in order to track and stitch together these point clouds. RevoPoint is generating this point cloud and using the, the commonalities of the model as the model moves into a different orientation to kind of stitch things together. And that's why you're able to use this scanner in both handheld mode and turntable mode. And RevoPoint just does an amazing job of utilizing this feature tracking and making sure that your models stay in line. 
And so what we're left with here is a point cloud of all of that data. And now we want to turn this into a mesh model. And you may be wondering, you know, what are the steps involved? Is that a complicated process? Well, not with RevoPoint. It's literally one button here, one click to turn this from a point cloud into a mesh model. I click apply and... And there we go. This has now been converted from a point cloud into a mesh model. And what that means is I could take this mesh model and load it into a 3D CAD system and then continue to clean up the mesh and maybe create additional features in 3D CAD. But that's not what I want to do. I want to see what I can do right here, right inside of the RevoScan software. So one of the things that I need to do is identify any areas where there's a, you know, a hole in the scan, like here underneath the chin of that knight. There's a big old hole in the scan. And so I need to get rid of that hole. And uh, on the bottom here, obviously, this is wide open as well because this was sitting on the turntable. So what do I do to accomplish that? Well, I can do that right here in RevoScan using this fill holes command. So once I choose fill holes, you'll see that what I can do is I can detect any holes in the model. And then I can click on these edges, these holes that are in the model. If this is one as well, I could click on this and then I can choose apply. And RevoPoint is able to fill in those holes, ideally leaving me with kind of a watertight surface. So now I'm going to click plain detect. And then I'm going to click on this edge down here apply to fill that in and hopefully that's all hopefully there's no more holes but what i like to do is just run it one last time detect and now this time it came up with an error hole detection failed which just means that there's no more holes this is a nice watertight vessel and so at this point now that we have this nice watertight vessel we can export this model and we can export it as a mesh model using the stl option and we can export this. I'll call this one Black Knight 2. Obviously, I did some testing before I shot the video. Black Knight 2. We can now export this. And now that this is exported as an STL, we can launch our 3D printing preprocessor and just drag and drop that Black Knight 2 STL right here, right into the 3D printer. And so now all we need to do is some basic alignment and set up our supports in the 3D printing software. And boom, we are good to go. And we can now slice this thing and turn it into a file which can be 3D printed. And so we did it. We were able to successfully take this white chest knight, scan it, and 3D print a replacement black chest knight. And this is like a childhood dream to me. I mean, how many times have you been playing a game and lost a game piece and wished you could just conjure up the replacement piece? Well, now we can do it. And this piece came out really great. I mean, you can see all of those details on the ridges on the back of this piece. You can see all the details around the eyes and around the ears and the nose. Really, I'm super impressed with how this scan and how this 3D print came out. And this is really a testament to just how easy it is to get started in the world of 3D scanning using the RevoPoint solutions. But this is just the beginning. Since I made this first scan, I've been regularly visiting the RevoPoint Facebook group for Mini and Mini 2 users, and I've included a link down in the description of this video to that group because I've picked up a bunch of useful tips and tricks and techniques that I'm now using when I perform my 3D scans. Like when we made the original scan, I was missing a big chunk of the point cloud data under the chin of that knight and also under the base of that knight, which I had to fill using the fill hole utility. But what I've learned is that you can actually create multiple scans in different orientations, and then you can merge these scans together to close off those gaps. Pretty cool stuff, right? I also learned that there's a bunch of tools for manually editing and cleaning up the point cloud data, like the isolation tool, which automatically goes around the entire point cloud and looks for kind of rogue point data that's just hanging out in space and then allows you to quickly purge that data. And you can also manually select elements of the point cloud. So like in this region here, I can go around this edge that's rough and that's kind of curling up and I can just select that using the lasso tool and delete that data. And that way I'll get a much smoother and much more consistent result from my final mesh. 
I mean, take a look at these two scans. On the left, we see my very first scan, and on the right, we see today's scan. And I think you'll agree that the one on the right looks much, much better. And in this video, we simply went from 3D scanning to 3D printing with no 3D CAD in the middle. But I'm a 3D CAD expert, so of course I was interested in learning about some of the tools which make the mesh more efficient and easy to work with, like the Overlap Detection Tool and the Simplify Tool. These tools help to reduce the overall complexity of the mesh, which made it much faster to export my 3D scan data, bring that into 3D CAD as a mesh model, and then convert that mesh model into a true 3D solid. So in the future, we'll make some more tips and tricks videos to cover some of these more advanced topics. And if that sounds good to you, be sure to hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to this channel. And when you're ready to start your journey into the world of 3D scanning, be sure to look down below in the description. We've got an affiliate link and some details to help you get a little discount on your very first RevoPoint 3D scanner.